Thailand is changing the way it taxes foreigners, and some in the expat community are rushing to say this is the end of Thailand as a tax-friendly country. But I'm here to tell you, not so fast. Thailand recently announced a tweak to its tax code, and the truth is, if you don't earn a lot of money, this may hurt you. And yet, it's not nearly as bad as people think, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm also going to give you alternatives if you just say, hey, I don't like this new policy. So here's the story from the Thai Inquirer. It talks about Thailand's revenue department and the new guidelines, which will see all income from abroad taxed as personal income, regardless of whether it was earned income or savings. A senior official at the Ministry of Finance confirmed that this is the new policy. Those that have earnings from occupation or business abroad or wealth that is located abroad and has brought those assets into Thailand must factor this into their personal income for the year. Now, let me explain that in plain English. What Thailand has historically had is what's called a territorial tax system. If you have a job in Thailand or you have a business there, there certainly are some exceptions on businesses with different tax policies for certain kinds. But generally speaking, whatever you do in Thailand where the money is obviously generated in Thailand, you buy an apartment and rent it out, like that's taxable in Thailand. But anything that's generated outside the territory is exempt. Now, what I've told you for years about these territorial tax systems, which exist in a number of Southeast Asian countries, including Malaysia and others, countries like Georgia and Eastern Europe, and then a number of Central American countries like Panama or Costa Rica recently said they would keep this as their policy, is it's not always quite as simple as if the money is made overseas, it's tax-free. And one example of that was Thailand, where if you earned the money in the year that you brought it into Thailand, then they would tax it. And so the idea was, hey, uh, bring a bunch of money into your bank account in Thailand on like January 2nd and like do something like that. And then it's like, okay, like, hey, this obviously I didn't just make this money yesterday. And so people thought Thailand was tax free. It's not. For some people, they were able to live there and not pay any tax. Now, obviously, some people live in these countries and they just aren't aware of what to do and they just think, no, it'll catch them. And that's not a good idea. But people thought that there was no tax because their income wasn't taxable. And so this is one thing you should consider if you're looking at countries where you can go and live and pay zero or very little tax. It, it's not just the countries that say 0% tax on the tin. There are countries like Thailand where there are different systems for income earned overseas or different systems for foreigners. And so what you are going to see is some people who are going to be perhaps dragged in compliance now. That's a separate issue. But Thailand is actually staying basically with this territorial system, but they're moving to a quasi-remittance-based system. People often confuse remittance as in, hey, if I make money overseas but don't bring it into the country, it won't be taxed. That doesn't apply in the U.S. or Canada. Like, there's lots of other rules, CFC and PE and, like, your tax rate. There's just lots of things that, you know, it's not that simple in most cases. There are a handful of countries in Europe that work on remittance for certain what's called non-dom, non-domiciled foreigners, and even occasionally not foreigners. But Thailand will have this remittance system where now instead of saying, unless you earn the money in that calendar year, they'll just say, listen, if you bring the money into Thailand, like we're going to tax it. And so remittances certainly include you know, bank transfer. Let's say you have a company in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong can be set up if structured properly to where you don't pay any tax in Hong Kong. And let's say you're from any country besides the United States for the most part, and you live in Thailand. So you're a Canadian living in Thailand with a Hong Kong company. You have zero corporate tax because you've structured the Hong Kong company properly. And because the money is coming from Hong Kong and you remit it in line with the way Thailand wants you to remit it, you really haven't had any tax liability. So the bank transfer, you might send the money from the Hong Kong company as a dividend to you as the director a uh, personal bank account every year uh, at the beginning of the year. And, you know, that's what the Thai accountant said to do. And, okay, cool. Credit card payments in most parts of the world would be, you know, considered remittance. If you go to Starbucks and pay with your card, it's like, okay, that's maybe not a Thai credit card, but you've remitted the money to the country. Like, whatever money you've brought into the country, uh, we'll see exactly what Thailand considers to be a remittance. But generally speaking, you know, you're bringing money into uh, the country. And so that money that's brought into the country, whether it's in a non-DOM system in Europe or whether it's in Thailand, is taxed at the individual income tax rate. So in Thailand, that ranges from 5 to 35 percent. 
if you make $140,000, give or take, US, more, that puts you in that top 35% bracket. So it's a progressive tax system. All right, again, if you have a job in Thailand and you're a very, very well-paid person in Thailand, your top tax bracket is 35%. And, and you're like, we don't have a tax-free country. Whereas the guy who, again, has the whole you know, foreign structure could have lived essentially tax-free legally. But what's changing is, again, it's not just going to be money that you've earned in previous years. Anything will happen. This will start in 2024. Now, the first thing is, and here's where people get confused in many different cases, you will need to be a tax resident. In a country like Thailand, there are fewer conditions to become a tax resident. So Western countries might have three or four or even more, more subjective criteria. You may not spend 183 days in certain European countries, but if you're kind of sort of starting to get close, we've talked to people who are like, yeah, I got a letter. Why are you coming here four months a year? Like, are you paying tax somewhere else? If you're not, maybe you should pay to us, right? And so there's a lot more subjectivity and a lot more criteria and a lot more ways to get you into know, the tax system. Emerging countries like Thailand oftentimes just have a day's test. So in Thailand, it's 180 days. If you don't spend that 180, you're not a tax resident, which means this doesn't apply to you. And that's generally, again, the case in like a non-DOM system. You're non-DOM once you're tax resident. And so Thailand will kind of have this kind of European non-DOM system under its territoriality, just kind of putting it in plain English. And so if you're following, for example, my trifecta approach, where you like to winter in Asia, let's say you have bases in other countries and you're, you're spending four months in, in each different you know, part of the world, uh, and Asia's your winter place, and that's Thailand. Well, you know, three, four months, that's not going to make you a tax. I'm not giving you tax advice. There may be some unique, crazy circumstance where you are, but generally speaking, if you're spending four months a year there, you're not going to be a tax resident. So you could engineer how much time you want to spend there to where you are not a tax resident. And then this really wouldn't apply to you, right? I mean, if I go to Thailand on a vacation and I just use my credit card, they're not like, oh, you've remitted money to Thailand. Like, where's your income tax return? It's like, oh, I'm just here on vacation. And so you can get uh, Thai elite visa. Prices are going way up. If you're getting that now, you would have wished you got it before. You can get a Thai investor visa. There's a number of different ways you can get uh, you know, the ability to live in Thailand. And what a lot of Asian countries give you is optionality. So you can live there all you want, but you don't have to. And so different visas in Thailand, different residence permits um, have different requirements. But generally speaking, like you don't really need to be in Thailand that often. In some cases, you can be there as little as one day per year just to kind of renew the permit. And so having a residence permit uh, wouldn't require you to pay tax. I know Thailand, the visa policy uh, for visa-free travel for Western passport holders is generally 30 days. You can extend that to 60. Like, just get a residence permit if you want to live there. Um, even if that's not going to lead to citizenship. So the first thing, just to go back to basics here, is starting in 2024, if you're a tax resident, which means you're spending close to or the majority of your time in Thailand, then you are subjected to the next rule. Just having a bank account through an investor visa and just having that optionality is a place that's always sitting there waiting for you. Not a bad thing to have, whether it's in Thailand or someone else, have a couple different residence permits where, hey, I wouldn't mind going there. Or, hey, if the fur starts flying, I'd like to go there. You know, if something happens in the world, that's my place. You know, banks in Thailand, I think you're relatively safe. A lot of Chinese people are considering it kind of a second Singapore. Nothing wrong with doing that. Like, just having an optionality and not being there all the time, it's not really an issue. Where it becomes an issue is starting 2024, you're living the, you know, basically half or more of the time in Thailand. Now you're going to have this remittance issue. This is where if you don't earn a lot of money, it potentially will hurt you more because the system of remittance is you want to arbitrage how much you remit to live in that country versus how much you earn. So let's go back to the Hong Kong company. You make a million dollars a year in your Hong Kong company, but you spend $100,000 a year in Thailand. You're not even in the top tax bracket at $100,000 a year. That's the income that counts. Obviously, you know, this is a reason why I think, you know, having a corporate structure, even if you live in a more tax-friendly country, is a good thing to do because you can control kind of payments. That's a whole separate conversation. Let's say you want to just move the whole dividend out. And if you're allowed to, based on your, your tax status, dividend out the entire million dollars in profit. $900,000 could go somewhere else to an asset haven, for example. That goes to, you know, your Singapore bank. Well, that's not coming into Thailand unless you're using the Singapore bank's debit card to spend it in Thailand. But let's just say you send $100,000 to your account in Thailand and you just spend money from your Thai bank account, uh, whether it's utility bills or it's Starbucks or it's dinner or whatever it may be. 
that hundred thousand dollars will be taxed and I didn't do the exact calculations, but I guess it'd be, you know, twenty something thousand dollars. And you'd have to file a tax return and you'd pay twenty thousand dollars. So if you're spending the majority of your time in Thailand, I'm not giving you tax advice. You, maybe you're sucked into someone else's system too. But let's just say Thailand is your tax residence and it's your only tax residence. It's the only place in the world where you're liable for tax. Under the new system, you made a million and you paid, you know, 20 some thousand. Your tax rate's two point something percent because you don't owe tax anywhere else. You don't owe tax at the corporate level and you're not living anywhere else long enough under our scenario where you're paying tax. Not a bad deal. Obviously, if the entire 100,000 was your income, well, now your tax rate's like 20 some percent and that's like not as great of a deal. And so like that's the system with a remittance based or a kind of a non-dom system is what's the difference between how much you earn and how much you spend. And so obviously the more time you spend in Thailand, if you're qualifying to be tax resident, you're going to be living there long enough. Like if you just live there one day per year, you wouldn't be tax resident, nor would you be spending much money there. If you're spending the majority of the year there, obviously you're going to start to spend more money. You're going to have fewer opportunities to spend money somewhere uh, else. And so I like to live pretty frugally. I like to spend a very small amount of my income. And so I'm a person for whom this system works. And for me, I'd be more than happy to pay 2% uh, tax. The bigger hassle would be the paperwork. And that's obviously where Nomad Capitalist's network of experts comes into play. So you can see a lot of people look at the, the headline tax rate and they say, oh, Thailand has 35% taxes. That's terrible. Well, no. Many people have been living in Thailand tax-free. And then they see this headline, oh, the party's over, you know, move on. Now, again, I'm going to talk to you about some alternatives in a second. But what Nomad Capitalist helps you do is figure out what the real story is for your situation. There's a lot of this noise in the expat circles where this is good, this is bad. You know, people tell me I'm in Colombia. You must be paying col crazy, col aren't their taxes crazy there? Yeah, I spend three weeks in Colombia. I don't trigger tax residents. Colombia has a pretty similar system to, to Thailand. You spend basically the same number of days and you're in. Or you don't, and you're not in. And you don't pay anything. And so you want to know, based on your particular needs, how to structure your affairs. It's different if you're living there full-time versus half-time versus four months a year versus one day a year and you're just keeping a residence permit in your back pocket. Everyone's got different reasons for, for any of those scenarios. I ultimately decided I have a few too many residence permits, but I was deciding, do I want to move some money to Thailand and you know get a little bit of exposure there and have a brokerage account to trade Thai stocks? So there's a few that are harder to trade overseas, and you know that'll be the basis for a residence permit. I'll go one day per year. And ultimately, I decided I'm going enough other places one day per year to keep those residences active. But that you know scenario for me would be different than I want to live in Thailand nine months a year. So understand, the more money you make, uh, and the less that you live in in Thailand, you're still going to have a pretty favorable tax situation. But starting in 2024, if you're living there for that 180 plus days a year, you're going to have some liability unless, uh, unless you're just living at someone else's uh, behest, I suppose. Alternatives. Uh, in the region, Malaysia still territorial. There was talk. There was noise. Malaysia was changing that policy and kind of going to go to a similar policy as this, which again, I'd be more than happy to pay 2% if I lived more than half the year in Malaysia. Again, I do not, I, I have a home in Malaysia. I don't live there uh, the majority of the time. But Malaysia, if you did want to live somewhere the majority of the time, it is an English-speaking country. It is right next door, of course, to Thailand. It is a bit more expensive in terms of getting a residence permit for most people. There's a number of different MM2H programs that require bank deposits, depending on where you want to live. It ranges from, you know, 30-some thousand up to close to a quarter million dollars. But they still have the system, basically, that Thailand is leaving behind. Uh, and they will at least for the next few years. And I think they, if I had to guess, they'll continue that. The Philippines also has a system. They have a way you can get residents in the Philippines. That's other options in Asia. Singapore, I suppose, is largely similar. Very expensive place to get into. There's some cheaper ways like starting a business, but it has some restrictions. Here's the alternative. If you're going to pay that a higher tax rate, let's say you're, you know, 10 or 20 percent is what it would cost you to live in Thailand because you're, what you're spending versus what you're earning is, is too similar. Look at Europe, look at some of the non-DOM countries. And so the downside of Thailand is you're not going to get citizenship there, generally speaking, and certainly not in some of those, those residence permits. Obviously, Ireland is a much more expensive country than Thailand. Obviously, it's a much colder country than Thailand. But just as an example, you know, non-DOM system for uh, people who are coming in, uh, you can get a residence permit through a number of different means, getting a job, for example. If you're a European Union citizen or a British citizen, you could just move right in. And uh, after five years, you get citizenship. And so if you're looking for a place to spend a good chunk of the year, obviously a very different situation. 
Uh, but you know, at a certain point, if, you know, once you say, hey, I'm willing to pay a little bit of tax, I just want to pay less than 40 or 50 where I'm from, well, then you have to ask yourself, do I want to pay zero somewhere? And generally, zero tax countries aren't going to give you citizenship. There are some where you can pay zero for a certain number of years and get citizenship in that time. Uruguay, perhaps, comes to mind for some people. But if Thailand, if your tax rate in Thailand now is 20%, you could perhaps arbitrage to pay a little bit more than that in some of these non-DOM countries. I think Ireland's probably the easiest one in terms of timeline to get citizenship. Malta's going to take you a lot longer, but obviously it resembles Thailand more. Um, Cyprus, you know, is one. And so those are some alternatives to look at. What Nomad Capitalist does with the people that we help is evaluate all the different options. You can't just look at what's on the tin. That's why we've helped people move to 31 different tax-friendly countries now. And we look at the whole picture. You have to understand residence, citizenship, banking, tax, like everything has to go together. It shouldn't all be in one country. You can have a bank account in Thailand, but it's probably not going to be your main bank account for reasons that we've mentioned today. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. That's what we help people figure out. There's a lot of unknown unknowns that we help people figure out. And it all has to work holistically so that what you're doing in Thailand doesn't screw up what you're doing somewhere else and vice versa. If you're an American, it's even more complicated. We can help you uncomplicate it. Get your plan B's as well as your plan A's. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. But if you're looking at Thailand, don't think you're paying 35% tax because you read some noise from uh, some expats.